Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be looking at the Shan Yu prototype. This is the prototype destroyer from the Yang Jun faction that everyone will have gotten today as part of their Omega daily login rewards. This was an absolute beast of a ship during the final test. There have been some changes, and I know it's one of those ships that a lot of you are worried about for various different reasons. It's not the one from the login rewards I'm concerned about. That arrives in the, uh, on day 30 as the Can Yu prototype. Oh boy, that ship scares me. But what we're going to do today is have a look at the Shan Yu prototype, see what's changed since final test, see if this is still a ship that actually has any uses, and how you can fit it, so on and so forth, and we'll have a look at everything you need to know about this particular ship. Before we jump in though, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos, and let me know what topics you want me to cover in those future videos by commenting down below. Join me on the social media channels shown along the bottom of your screen to chat all things Eve Echoes, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining me over on Patreon. Details are on screen now. Awesome, well let's talk about the Shan Yu prototype. So if we go into the fitting menu here, you can see that even though I am not skilling into any form of the decomposer skills, and ultimately the prototype itself doesn't have any bonuses for that kind of stuff, I'm sitting at a quite comfortable 130 DPS with this thing. So let's have a look at what it's all about. Well, the Shan Yu prototype can be insured for repairs because it's a prototype ship, um, so you can use those ship repair vouchers to bring this one back if you destroy it. It then has three high slots, two mid slots, three low slots and three of each of the rigs. Now one of the big problems we had in the final test was that we actually got supplied with the rigs as well and those rigs were just filthy disgusting. Anyway, so let's have a look at what the ship can do. Well, the roll bonus gives it a 75% increase to small decomposer damage, which is huge, and a 15% increase to small decomposer optimal range, which again is very useful considering they cap out about 10 kilometers normally, 15% increase in shield, and it has plus one warp stability. That warp stability does kind of infuriate me because it means you need either a strength two warp disruptor or two warp disruptors to lock this down, and both of those things on their own are incredibly rare, which makes makes this a surprisingly survivable ship for PvP. Talking about survivability though, you will notice that if you look at its overall defense of 3268, that has been dropped rather dramatically from where it was in the final test. If you can actually catch someone in one of these things, you are going to do some rather severe damage to them. Flight velocity of 212 is otherwise fairly slow for a destroyer. It's not far, it's not slow overall, but it's slow as far as some destroyers go. Warp speed of 4.5 AU is what you'd expect for a destroyer. Power grid is fairly solid. Capacitors are okay. Cargo hold capacitor, uh, capacity is, again, what you would expect for a destroyer of this kind of type. Now, let's have a look at those weapons, because this is where the real problems sort of come with, uh, with, with the Yang Jun ships. The returned small jet stream decomposer, 43.59 DPS, um, heavily weighted into kinetic and explosive damage. So for me, like a Minmatar pilot, this is pretty much doing the same damage that most of my turrets are. Meta level 5 for these. Power grid requirement is 11 megawatts. You can fit three of them comfortably onto the Shan Yu prototype. Activation cost is 8.9 gigajoules. Activation time 7.2 seconds. Fairly slow to fire for a short range weapon. And with the bonuses to the Shan Yu prototype, this has an optimal range of 12.42 kilometers. There is no fall off with this. That is maximum range. If you're at 12.42, you can hit for optimal damage. If you're at 12.43, you miss. Simple as that. Tracking speed of 118 isn't too shabby, but it's not overly great for a small either, um, and reload time of 2.5 seconds is kind of what you'd expect as well. There's nothing huge on this. Um, ultimately, these are still very powerful weapons and can be fitted to other ships as well. In fact, I had a bit of fun putting the return small jet stream decomposers onto my Coercer, uh, my Coercer fleet issue, navy issue, sorry. Um, and actually the DPS drop wasn't that huge at all, despite the fact that I had no skills whatsoever into, uh, into decomposers. So they are powerful weapons, and if you're only running around with like Mark V lasers, they might actually be better, which is mm, still slightly concerning, I'm not going to lie. Now, you, in the low slots for this particular ship, I have put in one of those, the returned macro particle stabilizers. These are the weapon upgrade modules, like a gyro stabilizer, heat sink, magnetic field accelerator, that kind of thing there. Um, these are designed to give you a flat DPS increase by having one fitted to the ship, and you can activate it for a short period to give a rather significant boost to the DPS. Now, if you really want to, you can fit all three of the ones that you have onto the Shan Yu prototype and kick that DPS up into 
into the stratosphere. I would not recommend this as ultimately that means you have no prop, you have no tank, and this is still actually a fairly squishy ship and it's fairly slow moving. With the range on these, you need to be up close and personal, um, you need to be within that sort of 10 to 12 kilometer range. So if you don't have a prop, you're not gonna be able to reach that range. And if you don't have shield boosters or any form of tank, you're not gonna survive at that range for long. So I would recommend only fitting the one unless you've got a very specific reason, like if you're flying with someone who's in a logistics frigate, for example. Now, speaking of prop and tank, I've gone for a Mark V small afterburner. Ultimately, I feel a micro warp drive would actually be the better choice here because you wanna get up close and personal super quickly, but I didn't have one handy. Go for the micro warp drive if you can get one. If not, a small afterburner will do the job just as well. It will do the job satisfactorily. The warp drive is the better option, but the afterburner will still help and is you need a prop of some kind. Finally, then a Mark III shield booster rocks out the final of the low slots there. Again, go for a Mark V if you've got one. I just didn't have one spare. Um, the better you have, obviously, the better. It's just about taking those extra hits. Because if we look at this thing's defense, again, you can see 3,444 is the standard defense for the Shanyu prototype. It has been dramatically nerfed from what it was in the beta, but you can see that that is almost entirely there on the shield with a fairly large structure as well, but that armor, don't even bother with the armor. The armor itself, oh, 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 it, it, that goes down super quick. I lost one of these actually out in a dead space anomaly this morning and having a bit of fun just trying to really push this and see how far it could go. We got a couple of ships down before uh, before this went. Literally, they targeted me and I was dead before I could even notice. The shields went down and the second the shields were down, I got the notification that that's it, I was popped. It's, it's that fast to go through the armor. Anyway, for mid slots, because this is quite a short range, uh, quite a short range vessel, we're going to have a Mark V stasis Weber fire on there. That helps us deal with the fact that the turrets don't have the greatest tracking for short range smalls. But yeah, by slowing your opponent down, you can improve the tracking. You know, your tracking doesn't ha it, it, your tracking doesn't suffer as much. You can still hit that target. The Mark V small energy Nosferatu, again, we should be within sort of the six to eight kilometer range, hopefully, so we can actually activate the small energy Nosferatu. Because the decomposers do use a fair amount of capacitor, this does help us remain stable when we're in combat, up close and personal, warp now, like orbiting around someone and shooting them with decomposers. You can see here that actually we are on capacitor stable. So looking at the statistics of this ship, it's as I said, this was never the one that worried me. When I looked into the uh, when I looked into the stats, I've co uh, covered ahead of time that we were going to be getting these and what the, uh, what their stats actually look like after the developers gave us the ship ship stat sheet. That's a hard thing to say without swearing accidentally. The ship stat sheet. <laughs> when I had a look at that, I wasn't overly worried about the Shan Yu prototype, and I'm still not. It is so fragile. This is a very squishy ship. If you can lock it down, which is admittedly difficult with that plus one warp stability, you can get rid of it fairly quickly. Its DPS, though, considering there are no skills trained in this at the moment, is astonishingly high for a ship of this size. Then again, I suppose it is a faction ship, and yeah, if you get it blown up, you can rebuild it, but you do lose those decomposers, and you are going to have to then go down to the, uh, the civilian versions. If you look, the standard here is 43.59, whereas the civilian versions, if we scroll down to those which come fitted on the ship, basically. So when you rebuild it, even if you're out of turrets, you do have them, you see 6.6. .6 too. It's a massive drop in DPS. Um, obviously, that's not including the bonuses um, once it's fitted to the ship, but yeah. Now, you can choose to skill into this if you want to, if you come into weapon technology and then down to decomposers. Obviously, small decomposer command is the one that I've got as a standard here. Everyone gets that as part of it here. If you look at this as a stat, what this does is increases the damage and the tracking speed. Now, that does mean that if you want to put these decomposers onto other ships, as I said, I have fit, this, uh, fit them onto a Coercer with fairly good, uh, fairly good effects. This is a skill that you might want to train just to do that. The trouble is we don't actually know where you're going to get more at this point in time. Obviously, there are a lot of people who have Omega who don't want this ship, who are going to be selling those on the market. I've already seen the prices are jumping on those, uh, on those turrets. But ultimately, once those are all sold out and destroyed, I don't know where we get them yet. We don't know how you get the Yangjun ships and the Yangjun decomposers. So skill into this at your own peril, because if you run out of ships and you run out of turrets, we, we, we don't know when you're going to be getting more. 
If you look at the decomposer upgrade, as usual, this gives additional optimal range and additional damage. If this is something you do want to skill in, as I said, buyer beware. Ultimately, go for the command first, then the upgrade later. That optimal range is useful, but it's not huge. 10% upgrade on the basic thing itself isn't huge. The damage is much more important, as is the tracking speed um, to get things up close and personal. But, I mean, heck, that's just the standard Shan Yu prototype. What about the rest of the ship tree? Well, let's have a little look at where you're eventually going to go for here with this ship. If we go into the ship tree here and look at the standard Shan Yu, this itself, you can see it's got some nice, uh, nice look, and we do get a really cool skin for the Shan Yu prototype actually tomorrow, which is this Lunar Eclipse one here. It does look very cool, I won't lie, and makes a nice collectible. So, in fairness, well done to them for actually making the ship fragile enough that collectible could be used for, as a decent descriptor. You'll see here that this one does require an advanced small decomposer upgrade to get its bonuses. It is an additional small decomposer damage, small decomposer optimal range, and shield. Um, ultimately, when you look at that based compared to the uh, compared to the standard Shan Yu prototype, it is a very large upgrade once you've got those skills to that point. But it's pointless unless you have the skills at that point. But again, the roll bonus you see is still a flat out improvement. It's just not much of one, and we don't know how you're going to be getting this ship yet. It's mainly when we come down here into the defense, you'll see that the defense is pretty much doubled between the prototype and the standard. So it's the fact that the prototype is this fragile that means I don't actually mind it all that much, and you need to get up close and personal with it. Now, ultimately, to me, then, what I'm eventually getting at here is that this ship itself, is it a collectible or is it actually useful? Well, it's, it's both. It's fragile enough that you need to be very, very careful with it, but it packs enough of a punch with no skill investment whatsoever that you can use it for some high tier ratting or going out PvP hunting. Miners beware, these things are going to be everywhere in, uh, in low sec uh, today. If you see a Shan Yu prototype uh, hop into your belt, get out of there ASAP because the damage these things can kick out is absolutely terrifying to something like a venture. So just be aware of that. Is it as good as it was in the final test? No. Is it still good? Mm, yeah, it's okay. It's solid for what it is, but do be careful with it. Very, very fragile, but it's, it's a glass cannon. It's a glass cannon is what I'm trying to say, so I'm not overly worried about this. I am still very concerned about the Can You prototype when that arrives in 20 more days. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this particular ship down in the comment section below. I know it's something that's worried a lot of you now that we've seen it in uh, actually on screen, seeing the stats here and, and what that actually means in comparison. What do you think? Are you still worried about this ship? I mean, the DPS there is lower than my Coercer fleet issue. It's a Navy issue. It's lower than my uh, Thrasher fleet issue. It's actually lower than my Stabber is at the moment, which is a, a, an interesting point just to, to raise there. Um, so... Ultimately, is this something you're still worried about? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.